We're going to study the decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide in order to learn something about kinetics. Kinetics has to do with the rates of chemical reactions, how fast reactants are converted into products. And the rate of a chemical reaction depends on many factors. It depends on how concentrated the reactants are. It depends on the temperature. If it's a reaction of a solid, it will depend on the surface area of the solid and on the addition of a catalyst and so on. So there are a lot of factors. And the decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide is a favorite demonstration in many parts in the chemistry curriculum. I have one very good friend, uh, who, a very good teacher friend, and she says that her, she tells her students that she does one demo. She does the demo of the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Some of you know it as old foamy. Others may know it as elephant's toothpaste. And she uses it in every part of the chemistry curriculum to teach a different topic. And that's a good lesson to learn about demonstrations, is that we can use one demonstration in many different ways to de illustrate different topics. So today, we're going to do the decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide to demonstrate kinetics, and specifically the effect of the concentration of the reactants on the rate of the chemical reaction. So I've set this up here a little bit beforehand. I have three large hydrometer cylinders. That's where our reaction is going to take place. I have pre-measured 100 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide in each of three 100 milliliter graduated cylinders there. I have three different concentrations of hydrogen peroxide. I have 3% hydrogen peroxide here on my right. I have 10% hydrogen peroxide on my left, and in the center, I have 30% hydrogen peroxide. You recognize the unique packaging for the hydrogen peroxide. It's in this expandable bottle. That's because, of course, as the hydrogen peroxide decomposes, it generates oxygen gas, and this bottle will expand with it. And so you may receive that, and it may be have inflated to this level, and that's st safe. That's the design of this type of packaging for the hydrogen peroxide, a very safe way to pack it and ship it and to store it as well. Now, in order to make this reaction a little bit more dramatic, I'm going to add some soap, and this is just some common Alkanox soap, and I'm going to add a couple of spatulafuls to the bottom of each cylinder. Try to add roughly equal amounts. I think I had about three there. And again, this is just uh, Alkanox soap, powdered soap. Okay, and we've got a little bit of Alkanox in each of those. And I'm going to go ahead and add the hydrogen peroxide to all three to begin with. Now what we know, of course, is even though hydrogen peroxide is a very reactive molecule, or compound rather, nothing happens unless you add, what, a catalyst, right? You always have to have a catalyst. Now many, many different substances will catalyze the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to take these out of the way here. I think it will be apparent later why I want to get as much as possible out of the way as I can here. And I have three small graduated cylinders here with uh, two molar sodium or potassium iodide. Iodide is a very good catalyst for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Now what we want to focus on in terms of the kinetics is the effect of the concentration of hydrogen peroxide, remember we said we had three different concentrations, on the rate, that is how fast the reaction takes place. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my first one here on the right, which we said had 3% hydrogen peroxide. That's normal uh, drugstore hydrogen peroxide. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add the catalyst, and let's watch and see what happens. The catalyst is added. We start seeing a little bit of bubbles. See a tinge of yellow in there? Just a tinge beginning to see. A pretty slow reaction. There's a little bit going on. We can see the bubbles being formed, but it's pretty slow. Hmm. Let's see what happens if we add 10% hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to go ahead and add 10% hydrogen peroxide to this one on the left here. 
Now, did you see that orange produced as soon as I added it? That orange is actually iodine that's produced. And now you can see that that reaction is quite a bit faster than the first one. It's already uh, exceeded the second one. You can see some foam being produced there. Do you see that orange yellow color right on the top? That's the iodine that's produced. Iodide is a catalyst, which means it increases the rate of the chemical reaction, but it's not itself used up. And though that's great, we're going to get a column of soap bubbles coming out the top and over the top. So that was 10% hydrogen peroxide. We'll let that one go a little bit. You can still see the iodine being produced. And this one is still going. Remember, so all we're looking at here is not a difference in the chemical reaction itself, merely in how fast it is based on the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide. That was with 10% hydrogen peroxide. What do you think is going to happen with the 30%? I've got it here in the middle. I hope we're going to be OK here. And we're going to go ahead and add the catalyst. And there we go. And notice that bright red orange color there. Whoa. And that one, of course, goes to town. Now, when you add the hydrogen peroxide, you get oxygen gas. I have a splint. I'm going to blow it out. It's glowing, though. And I insert it, and it reignites. We can keep doing that for quite a while. Notice all of the steam that's produced in that. You do want to do these in uh, that. Again, I'm going to try that glowing splint test again. I'm going to blow out the splint and insert it in there. Did you see it reignite as soon as it steps back in there? Let's try that again, see somewhere from the top. Basically, it keeps reigniting because the product is oxygen gas. That's what happens with 30%. That's a pretty dramatic, let's see how much, if we can keep testing this oxygen gas here for a while. And again, um, glowing splint, insert it, it reignites. Insert it, it reignites. Reignites each time. So that's the oxygen gas that's produced. Notice that all of the reactions take place. There, I used 100 milliliters so of each one, so the only variable here. You know, take the opportunity with every simple demonstration that you do to emphasize some of the points about how experiments are designed. In this case, it was in order to look at the effect of concentration on the rate of a chemical reaction, I had to make sure that I wasn't varying anything else, even, even inadvertently. Okay, And so I had the same amount of alkanox in every uh, hydrometer cylinder. I used the same volume of hydrogen peroxide in each different concentration, so totally different amounts then at the end. And I used the same amount of the sodium iodide catalyst in each one. So that the only variable, and again, this is to just take the opportunity to teach them about how science is done. Because if you look at the standards for teaching science, and especially the standard about science as inquiry, what they're really talking about is understanding how science is done. I hate to use the term scientific method because it makes it sound like there's a path and you just take that path and that's it. But those are important things. It's how to think like a scientist to do controlled experiments and so on. So to, in terms of the lesson that we learned from, uh, as my teacher friend said, she only does one demo. She does this one when she's teaching uh, kinetics. We saw that as we increased the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide, which is the reactant, that the rate of the reaction clearly increased. We had a relatively slow reaction, but it still takes place. The rate doesn't tell you whether or not it's going to take place. It's how fast. In this case, we had a faster reaction with the 10%. And of course, with the 30% hydrogen peroxide, we had a very, very fast reaction, an exothermic reaction. So you, you saw all of the steam that was produced there. We looked at the product of the chemical reaction. Hydrogen peroxide decomposes to give only two products, water and oxygen. If you, you can use this demonstration if you're talking about oxidation and reduction, because the hydrogen peroxide 
is, uh, actually is both oxidized and reduced in this decomposition reaction. Again, a lot of chemistry, focus on the core concept with each demonstration, but then also use the opportunity to integrate other concepts that you've covered throughout the year. You know, one of the things students always ask you is, do I have to remember this? Well, yes, I kind of like you to, okay? You know, they always say, well, do I need to? Yes, you do. In chemistry especially, it, it, take every opportunity to essentially review what you've already learned and then to introduce one new topic and then to tie it back together again. So we've done uh, elephant's toothpaste, if you will, to teach kinetics. We call this demonstration Sudsy Kinetics, and you can see why. Use the demonstration tray. It's a great way to do it. This is all self-contained. I'm going to take this out, go to the uh, uh, prep room, wash it all out. We'll be done.